Welcome back, gentlemen. So today we're going to take a look at the new energy transfer system difficulty modifier in the XWVM mod. So first what we're going to do here is we're going to demonstrate what the normal energy transfer rate looks like. Right? So this is the base game mechanics I'm going to demonstrate here. We're going to transfer all of our laser cannon energy straight into the shields. So we can see that a full laser battery charge is equivalent to about like 80% of a full energy shield bar. Of course, it's here it's both sides. So we have the front shield and the back shield. So it's uh, yeah, almost one to one basically. And if we switch it back, we transfer back, it still maintains one to one. So I'm now going to go and switch on the modifier. Here it is. Okay, so let's see. Right, so I'll try to zoom in on the video for you fellas, but you can actually see there is a red bar, like a single red bar, which I think probably is like 5%. So a full laser charge now, if you use the difficulty modifier, gives you about 5% charge of a full bar, basically. And uh, here's the other thing. So let's say let's say we want to switch it back. If you can see, the we are no longer at green bars now. We are now slightly yellow. So, and if you do this repeatedly, yep, you can now see it's now red. You are losing. That's like a tax you pay now for transferring energy from the shields into the cannons. Okay, so I've emptied out the shield bars here. And I just have the full cannon charge. I'm going to transfer that now. And yeah, you do, you do get some. It's about, I don't know, 1, 2, 3%, something like that. Um, so yeah, there's that. This is probably my personal favorite feature of the whole mod. Because it basically makes XWVM its own game at this point by taking away one of the more flawed aspects of the original game mechanic that made it far more arcade-like than simulator-like. The best comparison I can think of is in traditional prop flight sims, we have the concept of physical energy, which for the purposes of this video, I would just simplify it to altitude and airspeed. Because real planes are governed by the laws of physics, fighter pilots can only conduct so many maneuvers of specific types in a dogfight until they run out of energy. Good fighter pilots know how to manage their energy states and read the enemy's energy states in order to decide what kind of maneuver to execute that will give him a tactical advantage. With this new energy transfer system, you get a similar abstraction implemented into the game, but in a different form. You're going to have to do far more calculations with more tactics because you are now far more limited in what you could previously achieve and can't be the one hero that single-handedly takes down the whole star fleet. I've played through the entire first tour with this modifier on and from my experience you are now forced to think far more tactically than you normally would have. No longer do you have the capability of tanking the shots of an entire Thai squadron all by yourself. You've got to maneuver and use your wingman a lot more than usual in order to achieve your objectives. Sometimes you may even need to come up with whole new strategies and tactics to fulfill some of the missions. The best example I have is the recorded playthrough of my Star Destroyer takedown video. I had to rely far more on my own piloting skills to get me to the target fast enough in order to get the shields down in time. Compared to my original playthrough of that mission, it was far more intense as I simply couldn't transfer the lasers to the shields to get myself out of dodge. You have to forgo certain aspects of traditional game design balance if you are going to make a simulator because when simulating a set of variables, some things are just meant to be that way. The Y-Wing is probably the best example of that in this game. The Y-Wing serves the Rebel Alliance well at the strategic and operational levels. It's old and therefore cheap and easy to maintain and acquire. It's good enough to fulfill its role as a long-range strike fighter, perfect for the Rebels' hit-and-run raids. But the Y-Wing is also almost obsolete when put up against other starfighters of its current era. It still does have its strengths like nose mounted lasers making it very accurate, but overall it can't replace an X-Wing in a straight dogfight, nor should it because at the tactical level it's supposed to perform badly in such situations. If you really want to go into some brave new world territory, you should try the new energy system alongside with the firepower debuff modifier.
I've played a couple of missions with these settings and basically what happens is that XWVM creates an almost one-to-one -one recreation of the on-screen starfighter battles in this game. Rebel fighters now pretty much melt away against TIE swarms just like in the movies. 